And here we have one of my all-time favorites for the Nintendo NES, Wizards and Warriors. Released in 1987, the game was developed by Rare and distributed by Acclaim. And this game was a fantastic, fantastic game. There's a lot of depth in gameplay, there's a whole lot going on, it's an overall good time. The general premise of Wizards and Warriors is this. You are that knight there, and his name is Kuros. And, uh, there are several damsels in distress. They are captured by the evil doer named Malkil. And uh, you have to battle your way through eight stages to save the damsels and defeat uh, Malkil. Each stage is set up uh, so that there is a final end boss, and defeating the end boss uh, triggers the release of the damsel, and uh, typically a prize also. There are several different kinds of things you can pick up in the game. Uh, one of them is gems, and gems are a f sort of form of currency uh, in that you have to collect a certain number of them uh, to advance to the final stage area of uh, each level. Um, so far I think it's uh, it averages at about a hundred. Um, it might get higher as the um, in some of the later levels but I haven't played this game in a long time and I only played up until about level somewhere around midway level two um, in this review here. So I can't speak for the later stages but so far in the beginning it's a hundred gems and you'll see the knight guarding there it says a hundred gems above his head so once you get 100, he moves to the side, you can jump down there. Now, there are also several treasure chests scattered throughout the world. And there are three types of keys, three different colored keys that open the corresponding colored treasure chests and doors. The items inside the treasure chests vary, and um, it can be as mundane as a handful of gems uh, to some really useful items, like you saw a couple moments ago, I picked up the Dagger of Throwing. Uh, which allows me to throw these little daggers out from uh, from my body. It's a very handy thing to have. Uh, there's all kinds of different weapon power-up deals you can get. And this game, while it plays like a platformer, is also part RPG. And that's kind of fun. It's a nice, interesting combination. It's, um... Yeah, I think it, it it's got oodles of gameplay value. Um in that there's like a bit of strategy in how you approach it like many RPGs. But don't let the RPG um, qualities fool you. It, it is a platformer through and through, uh, but it is a damn good platformer. Uh, in fact, I think it's one of the uh, one of the best ever made for the uh, Nintendo, personally, but that's just my opinion. And what I feel sets it apart uh, greatly from other platformers of the time is the fact that it's non-linear. And what I mean by that is the maps aren't just a straight line running from point A to point B with some maybe some mild variations to that. Uh, but these games are th these game maps are pretty open. And it, um, in some of the later levels, it's almost more of a, a maze puzzle um, as much as it, as it is a platformer and an RPG. Um, so there's, there's tremendous value in playing this game because it uh, satisfies a lot of different um, aspects and things you might be looking for in a game. And another thing I'd like to point out is that for a game made in 1987, uh, it has uh, wonderful graphics and a fantastic soundtrack. Um, it's rare to find games of this uh, age that have uh, such a high caliber soundtrack that um, really conducts a good um, sense of mood uh, while you're playing. It really helps uh, dictate the pace and mood of each uh, level or sub-level you're on.
Now, when you sit down to play Wizards and Warriors for the first time, uh, you may be a bit overwhelmed by uh, everything that's going on and the sheer amount of uh, different kinds of weaponry and items you can pick up in the game, uh, which was pretty unusual for a platformer. Um, it has something like 20-some uh, different items and, uh, and things that you can carry with you throughout the game uh, or wear on yourself. And um, so it's a, it's a tremendously complicated game for its time, um, and and that's a that's a good thing. I mean, they really raised a bar on games with wizards and warriors. Here you see the boss of the first stage, and he's uh, pretty easy to beat. It's uh, almost whimsical—a giant bouncing skull. Uh, but yeah, he's he's pretty easy to dodge and beat. The first boss is generally a gimme in most games, but and Wizards and Warriors is no different, but uh, then again, at this point in the game, we're still trying to get a feel for how to play the game. And we rescued our first damsel. And here we are on stage two, and you can see that the, we are underground, according to the map, and the tone has changed, the musical tone has changed, as well as the gameplay tone. Um, and it, it, it picks up in general difficulty here. Um, and not only is the game a, a platformer, but it becomes more of a maze puzzle uh, on these levels, on these underground levels. And uh, there's also, you've noticed, potions scattered to, uh, throughout the worlds here. And uh, the different color potions uh, give you different kinds of powers. Some are invincibility, some make you run faster, others make you jump higher. Um, so it helps with the uh, uh, to break up the monotony of uh, simple platform jumping. So all in all, uh, Wizards and Warriors is a tremendous, tremendous game. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's probably my favorite Nintendo game for the NES. Uh, and that's saying a lot. I have a lot of uh, uh, cherished uh, favorites, but this one probably goes right to the top of the list if anyone were to ask me. Um, so if, if you see it, definitely pick it up. And if somebody else tells you this game sucks, then you should put on your boots of force and kick them square in the ass. Uh, and tell them to f*** off, because this is uh, an awesome game, no doubt about it. So I hope you enjoyed this review of Wizards and Warriors, because I sure enjoyed playing it, and uh, had a fun time. I'm your host, Ami, for Classic Games Revisited. Until next time.